Hello, this is Everett Pierce, and today is November the 26th, 2016, and we have about five minutes to ten Arizona time. Now, this is part two of the term duly noted and collective knowledge. Okay, now what I said in part one, just to rehash, and we're going to take a different perspective about things in terms of being a problem solver. Okay, so in part one, we mentioned about in terms of creating the law and me being on the level of a judge or higher than a judge of coming to a agreement that best suits everyone. Okay, so that's what we discussed in first and the importance of duly noted and the importance of collective knowledge. That goes hand in hand with their First Amendment. And why it's important that people should freely be able to come forth of what they truly feel and think. Okay, even though it might be asinine, okay, but we cannot, we have to treat these individuals, you know, just like any other individual. Because we have evolution in progress here. A lot of people, and a lot of people's development has been interrupted in on many different ways okay so in our part one we we basically come to the conclusion that we passed a law that is illegal for animal cruelty it means if you're seeking some kind of pleasure some kind of gain from from killing the animal or torturing pain and suffering it doesn't necessarily have to kill the animal but it's the pain and suffering that will come along with that experience of that animal. The same thing that if it was applied to people. So when we see people, you know, on the news where, say, children or people, um, or even back in Hitler's day where they was in concentration camps and they weren't fed and they weren't, you know, didn't have the water and they became like bag of bones with skin over it. Okay, so I hate to break the bring these things up because we are to learn from our past, not live, not bring the past to the present, which is the element of monogamy, okay, is to learn from our past so we don't put these things in our present day or the future days that we have to re-experience this again, kind of like we've heard the quote of history repeating itself. Okay, now, what does it say, a year later we come back and now we have an issue this individual who believed he had the right and liberties to stick a firecracker up a cat's ass is now being brought forth in this meeting on a different term. Okay, and so would it say, I won't give a name because if I say a name, it's like, well, I don't do that ever. That's my name. No. Would it say Joe Blow um, or John Doe, okay. John Doe says, well, I've been following, following the laws. I have not put up a firecracker up a cat's ass. He was dead first. And then I put a firecracker up his ass. And so now, because now we have to, as a problem solver, we have to take into account of being able to, not to take democracy, even if it's an area of like, holy shit, you know. So, if this may be the time that, if you don't want your children to listen, I'm a man of communications in many words to teach my message. Okay, so, and he's quite proud of himself. And you can see it in this meeting. We'll say he's quite proud. You know, I didn't torture the animal. He was dead. He didn't feel a thing. But I still stuck a firecracker up his ass. Okay, so now do we move into the motion of creating a law that it's illegal to mutilate or de you know of the deceased? Okay, and of course we have you know laws in place, and that's the reason why we have these laws, and especially towards humans of what people can do to a dead human. Okay, and we're just talking about animals. Okay, so if we pass a law, there we have to take into account of human behaviors. 
Okay, just because it's the law doesn't mean they're going to conform to the law. It doesn't mean that they're on the evolutional level of thinking and doing. Okay, so we have to do it in such a way that everyone's happy. Okay, okay so the first thing I would run into is like, okay, we could pass the law. Is Now it's illegal to put a firecracker up a cat's ass even if it's dead. Okay, okay, because there's essentially is... We're past the law that animal cruelty, okay? Well, when the animal's dead, it doesn't feel pain. So there's, the element of cruelty is not there. So technically, as we see with human behaviors, they're going to find ways to circumvent the law. And say, see, you know, and we see that all, I mean, that's, you, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Okay. So <clears throat> do I pass a law and make it mutilation to an animal? And take every, maybe in his thoughts, we haven't accomplished his evolving in his evolution. So we haven't taken that away yet. And it's not that we don't, we want to take, of course, you know, we don't want people, because it just, it doesn't look right, it doesn't sound right. Okay, but at the same time, this isn't a level of evolution we have to deal with. Okay, so meaning that I could pass this law. So now, if I take all his liberties, you know, even if in, in that area, is now he might say, pardon my friend, he'll say, fuck it. I, I, you know, they don't want me to do anything. And then he says, fuck the laws, and I'm going to start going doing what I want to do. You know, okay. And, and until he reaches to that next level of evolution, you know, he or she could be doing this okay so that's why we got to take an account of human behavior human behavior has all these tools the tree of knowledge of good and evil if you're here on the sixth heaven you have chosen that path it means you want to know the positive and negative and how they fit together like a tempered piece of glass that got broken up in a billion different pieces okay so now is every one of the 10 members in there or, you know, I'm just saying 10. It could be 20, it could be 50, or whatever. Okay. So everyone's like, oh my God, you know, are you ever, you're going to allow him to keep doing that? Well, in a sense, he's not of animal cruelty. The animal is already dead. And then someone else brings up a point and says, well, how do we know the animal was dead? Or is he just telling us, is he lying to us that, that, the animal's dead. Of course, when they found the animal, it was dead with his ass blown out. You know, unless someone witnessed the the event, meaning they saw that the cat got ran over by a car, and then he ran out there, put a cracker up his ass. You know, <laughs> I mean, these are the the things that we we see in society. And I'm just using animal. I mean, we have a multitude of things out there. Okay, so so if I had a choice. If I had a choice of him going out there and putting up a firecracker's a firecracker up a cat, cat's ass or an animal's ass while it's still alive, yeah, that's that's not even up for choice. But I also have to be careful is if I take away his options until we get him evolved to the next level, he may just say fuck it, and next up everyone, not only people in, in my room that we're trying to come up with a better evolutionary concept he could be killing people and say hell with him he didn't like me anyways you know because when after i instructed jojo and jojo and jojo and and jane doe and john doe you know they are not to criticize or treat him any di any different because he was brutally honest about his thinking and they did okay now you add another variable in there is now, do we pass a law saying that once we have this meeting, <coughs> and if I catch you treating him differently, even though say say he's he's abiding by the law, he hasn't done anything to animals, even though it still remains up in his thoughts. Okay, but they are treating him differently. They're not even talking to him or or whatever. Man has many different ways of putting punishment onto other people. You know, and uh, 
So I would, you know, we would pass a law saying whatever is said in here stays in here and you are forbidden to treat him any different. You are not to go out to your neighbors and say, oh, did you know that John Doe over there likes putting firecracker people's ass? But people do it all the time. You know, you don't have a law saying that. You know, well, there is laws that in terms of like settlements of lawsuits and stuff that it's basically sealed. You're in, for this part of this settlement is you are not to explain any of the details that happen within that meeting. If not, you're in violation, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's why we have these multiple laws because, and it's a very complex, if you've ever been in a law library, I mean, I spent several years in a law library. And it's like, holy shit. Wow. You know, I mean, it just shows you the complexity of man. And that's why, in terms of electoral college, why we need electoral college. It means someone of a higher level of thinking. Because you're going to have all these people down here, or the voters. And they could be a slew of people. Now, people are not at that level of, of believing reincarnation exists. Well, it, it goes hand in hand with evolution. Okay, and there was a reason why people believe that reincarnation doesn't exist because, because if I was to tell you I'm Abraham Lincoln, I was the 16th president, and you don't believe it, you know, then it puts it an awkward position for me. Okay, and there's there are pros and cons to it, and we'll talk about reincarnation as to why people believe that way. You know, one of the reasons is if reincarnation does not exist. And you, when you start out your life, it's kind of like starting out with a fresh slate. So you, even though you have memory of this life, deja vu of this life, you can carry on. That's an element of deja, er, monogamy. Okay. So that's why I call spiritual amnesia. Okay. So spiritual amnesia is like an element of mo monogamy. It allows you to carry on this life. So you say, wait a minute, you know, okay, I don't like doing that. I don't like putting firecrackers up, people, you know, cats asses, and I, you know, and, and you're evolving, you know, you're developing in your, in your evolution. So it allows you a little freedom. That's why some people say, well, I'm going to move to a state where no one knows me. If no one knows you, then they don't know your past, and then you can kind of carry on as what you and how you see yourself, not. What you used to be is what you want to be. And that's what Donald Trump, let's make America great. And what has happened so far? I mean, to a lot of people, you know, compared to caveman, you know, this is, this is great. Okay. But compared to where we should be, we haven't even chipped. We got a chip off the tip of the iceberg. We haven't even began to become awesome or great because you know, I think therefore I am. It means you are awesome until such moment or time when someone else makes you believe other. Okay. So when everyone in the United States, in this world, I am awesome. Okay. The next stage is to identify those skill sets. Once you identify those skill sets, and then you develop them, whether it's communications, whether it's playing basketball, like with Michael Jordan, um, a whole slew of things. And start developing and using your manifestations, both voluntary and involuntary, in that direction. Otherwise, you can do it in reverse in the self-fulfilling prophecy and prove, and you'll put more effort in that area because it, it's nearly impossible to prove something that isn't correct. Okay. And you will find when you put your manifestation in things that are correct, you'll find that it will come far easier in the right way. That's why when I, when I frown, I have to use all these muscles to frown versus going, hey, how you doing? My name is Everett. You know, and it feels good. I get goosebumps. You know, and that's, that's another thing about me. You know, some people might think I'm weird, but if I meet someone new, hey, my name is Everett. And you, you can almost see the goosebumps. I get excited. It's it's like I see people as like a tool in an auto mechanics toolbox of energy. And it's like, okay, now I'm like I, I'm thinking and I'm analyzing, you know, how can you be a benefit to me and how how I can be a benefit to you and vice versa. That's how Everett thinks. 
Okay. So, duly noted. Okay, so, so we have to take an account of human behavior. And that's why we have the, the popular vote and the electoral vote. And we have a video onto itself. And we could spend many lifetimes breaking it down, giving examples, giving parables, giving um, so many examples. So people are, someone must be talking about me. And that is true when it comes to me. Now, some people say, but I know, <laughs> I know because I'm an energy man, is when someone is talking about me, or if I'm around you, and I, I sense you have some strong mental capabilities. I start scratching my head. I was like, ah, that's how I know you're smart. You know, I mean, it's like everyone's smart. Okay. On a one to 10, that means, okay. Can you be on the level of Einstein? Absolutely. You know, you are smart. You are awesome. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to say, I think therefore I am. So whether you're, you're on a one or a 10 scale of intelligence, you know, so so my body speaks to me. It tells me when I'm sick. It tells me when I'm hungry. So, and we use collective knowledge, collective knowledge from our own bodies. You know, every day we're reminded how we must work together, use our parts working together. But yet we, we look in the Senate and we see with political parties, they have missed, they, they missed the boat somehow. They're supposed to be working together. Like I'm using my arms, you know, with a common goal is it's about when the dust settles, like Obama has said, and many other people, you know, when this is over, it's about, it is us. It is us Americans. It is we, the people. It's we, United Nations, we stand. Okay, so, so when you put the human element in there, that's why we had the Electoral College. Okay, that's why we have the popular vote. Before the states became the 50 states. They depended on the popular vote. That way, everyone is doing the same thing. They, they all believe, you know, say, for example, if California, everyone there believed it was okay to put a firecracker up a cat's ass, everyone did it. So there, you know, in a sense, you know, not saying that made it right. It means they were practicing the new evolutionary concepts of evolution, you know. So, not that I care to see a cat, you know, that be done to a cat or any animal as far as that goes. Okay, so, but as a problem solver, we have to look at many things. And we have to really pay attention to those that are going to trip us up. You know, I call keystones. Okay, meaning that a fullback, he's running down the ball, and he know he's more than capable, like John Riggins of Washington Redskins. He could carry 10 people down to the end zone. Okay, his main concern, or any football player, is not the player. It's actually a seven-pound foot that could trip him, that keeps him from the end zone. So we have to look in terms of problem solving is, okay, do I put my focus in this guy that wants to put firecrackers up a dead cat's ass? Or do I f put my focus on someone who's like Hitler that wants it, it'll have the end result of killing thousands thousands of people so we have to prioritize things we also have to make sure even though it's in the negative realms of energy we still have to give it a certain level of choices okay because if we take away its choices like say for example you take all the guns away all the guns away gun control gun control gun control What's that going to do with ISIS and any other groups out there? They're going to be creative and objective and bring about things that can be more volatile, more impact than what an AK-47 or AR-15 could ever be. Okay, so we don't want to force them in areas. So that's why it, there's a little balance there in terms of understanding human behavior. And also with the timeline of man, is we don't want to force it. So gun, gun control, as proven so far, has been proven to be ineffective. Okay. And the reason for that is if you have 100 bad guys, you should have at least 1,000 a, a good guys well-trained in their firearm. So that, that way it puts a message to the, 
to the hundred bad guys that if you come in our town, you might shoot a couple of us, but I guarantee you there'll be a nine hundred of us that will riddle you like Swiss cheese. Okay, that's a deterrent. Okay, that's the reason why, and, and the gun itself is symbolism 101. Symbolism, the right to bear arms. That means right to protect yourself. To get to the root of it, it's self-preservation. That's why we have armies, is to protect this nation. So if other nations kill each other, and it's just us, we have to protect mankind, the human race. So we are identified by